Deuteronomy 4, God warned the Israelites to be diligent, that they never forget what God had done for them. But not only did he tell, warn them of the dangers of their ever forgetting what God had done to get them here. In Deuteronomy 11, he also told them to teach it, to tell it, so that their children would prosper. So that their children would be blessed. So that their children would excel above culture. You tell, you teach what God has done for you to get you here. Because when you tell it, who you tell it to is going to be blessed. When you tell your children what God has done, when you teach it to them, this is what God did to get us here. It, it, it unlocks the potential and the blessing and the favor and the destiny of your own children. Somebody say amen. Amen. When God gave the Israelites the plan for keeping Passover, God explained in Exodus 12, 26, when your children ask, what does this ceremony mean to you? You tell them what God has done for you. You tell them how good God has been to you. You tell them how he made a way for you. You tell them how he saved you and he forgave you and he set you free and destroyed everything that tried to hold you captive because they're hearing and they're knowing each year, huh? being told all over again what God has done for you will bring blessing to them. You say to them, children, I know I told you last year, but you listen, listen to daddy tell you one more time, we're not here because of how good we are we didn't get here because of how powerful we are but we're only here by the goodness of a good God and with the components of Passover Jesus instituted the covenant ritual we call communion 2nd Corinthians eleven twenty five. 25 Jesus said and every time you do it someone say every time every time you partake in communion remember someone say remember You need to talk about what God's done to you. You need to talk about how good God has been to you. You need to talk about how he made a way. Can I get any witnesses right now? You need to talk about how he saved you and forgave you and completely set you free from things you couldn't get over by yourself. Can I get any witnesses in the house? You need to talk about the mercy of God. You need to talk about the grace of God. You need to talk about the time where you thought you had ran mercy out and God could not have any mercy, any more mercy for you, but you woke up the next morning to find mercy at full supper. Can I get any witness right now? You look back and say, I, I, statistically, we shouldn't be here. We we shouldn't be blessed like we're being blessed. But I want to tell you how good God has been. You tell it to them all over again. Because our looking back and our thanking him for what he has done to get us here. And remembering that because of who he is, he is both faithful and able to do everything he has promised. This is what gives us the confidence that he's with us now. And he has us now. And he's working in the middle of what we're currently going through, even when we do not see how anything good can come out of it. Remember, come on, has he been good to anybody? Come on, has he been really good to somebody? Come on. Has he been faithful to you when you dropped the ball and you thought he would write you off and all he did was pick you up and forgive you and wipe the dirt off and say, here, take off running again. Can I get any people in the house getting a witness right now? Has he provided for you that time when you didn't have money to pay that bill and you say, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And God, come on, can I get any witnesses right now? You need to tell these stories. You need to tell these stories. You need to remember because what God has done to get us here gives us confidence that he's holding us right now. Somebody say, Amen. Amen.